Well, thanks everyone for joining me today. My name is Brooks Bonner. I am the Director of Community Engagement and Enrollment Management for the uh, Organization for Tropical Studies. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about OTS and our programs that we offer, most specifically the semester program, African Ecology and Conservation in South Africa. So to give you a little bit of background on OTS, uh, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're basically a bunch of, we're a consortium of a bunch of different institutions, research institutions, colleges, universities, both domestically and international, really focused on promoting scientific research in the tropics. So we have um, field stations both in Costa Rica and in South Africa, uh, three in Costa Rica and then one in South Africa. Uh, South Africa is where I'll be spending most of my time. Uh, today talking about the opportunities there. But OTS, we are known for our field-based programs. So I often will tell slash warn students that if you're looking for uh, a program where you're going to be inside all the time, uh, lots of lectures inside the classroom, OTS programs are maybe not for you. But if you join a classroom where you're outside, you get to learn by seeing, by smelling, by feeling, by feeling then OTS maybe the type of program for you. So like I said before, our programs field-based, they are research focused. So one of the main pillars of what OTS focuses on in our programs is developing and building field research skills for our students. The African Ecology and Conservation Program itself has been running for 20 plus years uh, with a, a small hiatus recently because of a, a global pandemic. However, we are the only US-based uh, study abroad program where students actually get to spend time and do research in Kruger National Park, the only one of its kind. So it's a pretty cool opportunity, um, but also not a traditional type of study abroad experience. So when we talk about where this program goes, it's a full semester um, and you spend about half of your time in and around Kruger National Park. And you can see from the image on your screen, Kruger National Park is in the upper right-hand corner of South Africa. It's a long, thin uh, national park, South Africa's oldest and largest national park. And if you connect it with another national park next door in Mozambique called the Limpopo National Park, it's a protected area roughly the size of West Virginia. So it's pretty large and uh, you will, you will, it takes about a whole day to drive from one end of the park to the other and you'll do that a few times actually during uh, the semester. A couple other things to know about Kruger National Park, it's a pretty uh, synonymous national park or when you think of uh, a sub-Saharan uh, protected area, it's gonna have lions, it's gonna have elephants, it's gonna have rhinos. Uh, it, it has, I think the highest uh, density of, of leopards in the wild leopards in the world. It's been a successful location for the reintroduction of African wild dogs, uh, which you will hopefully be lucky enough to see on your time with us in South Africa. And uh, it's also, it also currently has around between 18 to 20,000 African elephants. Uh, and we'll talk a little later, uh, if we have time, about some of the impacts that the, the growing numbers of elephants are having on the savanna ecosystem in and around Kruger National Park. So I talked earlier about us having a field station based in the park. So we have a, a recently completed, well, I guess it's a few years old now, um, but it still seems very, very new, is the Skakuza Field station in Kruger National Park in Skakuza, which is kind of the main um, entrance point for many tourists that visit, tourists and researchers that visit the park. It's a really cool field station with labs, with uh, a yoga studio, with re built out of repurposed materials. Uh, close by there used to be an old helicopter pad and we've actually used some of the concrete from the helicopter pad to build part of the field station. Um, it's got a pretty low uh, ecological footprint and it's also what's called a, I think it's a, a living building where it maintains, it's, or it keeps a cold temperature when it's warm. And then when it's, when it's cold outside, it keeps a warm temperature inside. So it kind of, it, it's designed to adapt to uh, outside conditions. And like I said, you'll spend about half your time here in Kruger, but the other half of the time when you're in South Africa, you're gonna be going all over. So we like to say you go to all corners of the country, um, you'll go way up in the north 
into another national park called Mapungubwe, which is famous for its baobab trees, which um, many of you actually, if you look at um, the previous slide, that image there in the black and white of that tree is a baobab tree. Uh, it's a very famous and culturally significant tree uh, in many cultures in South Africa. So in the north, you'll see a bunch of those in the dry Mapungubwe National Park. You'll also go to um, the Cedarburg, which is a, a semi-dry, arid place that's very similar to kind of Utah and the red rocks of around Utah, looking at some of the oldest rock formations on Earth. We're also looking at um, hieroglyphs in that area and cave drawings. And then you'll also be going down to the south in Cape Town and visiting uh, a very metropolitan area in Cape Town, a very diverse and progressive city. And then at the same time, be looking at doing research in and around uh, some saltwater systems in Cape Town, which is where the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean meet. So um, high levels of uh, endemic species, as well as um, just uh, very difficult environments for many marine, um, marine species. So you'll spend some time down there looking at tide pools, but you'll also be looking at um, freshwater systems as well. How does habitat fragmentation and climate change, how are those factors influencing um, certain species, specifically a type of amphibian in the Cape region. Now, I mentioned earlier, one of the, the kind of the main focus of this program is building field research skills. So when you come down to South Africa, when you get there for the first few, first few weeks, we're really gonna get everyone on the same page, get everyone, give everyone a foundation for South African ecology, South African ecosystems, um, with the idea that after a few weeks or partway through the program, you're gonna jump on board with ongoing long-term research that's happening in and around Kruger National Park. So uh, we have research going on related to elephants, biodiversity and fires, uh, other research involving rhinos. And if you remove rhinos from the ecosystem, those type of small grass grazers, how does that influence um, the severity of wildfires in the area? So those are just two of the projects that that we have ongoing that you'll jump on board with and understand kind of how to conduct field research. Uh, but with the end goal that by the end of semester, you're designing through the mentorship of our faculty and staff, you're designing your own independent research project that you will you know, carry out the last four weeks of, of the semester. And that, that then you will present to the South African National Parks community there in Kruger National Park. So many students um, present research that hasn't been done, obviously much of the research is that hasn't been done before or looking at issues. We had a, a student a few years ago look at microplastics in all four major rivers that cross the park, which had never been done before. She was able to turn that into um, a grant to come back a couple, I think a year later and continue that research. So many students who come to South Africa end up coming back in some shape or form many to continue with research that they started in the course or to come back as graduate students or to come back as TAs or assistants in other programs and courses that OTS runs. Um, in terms of the court or in terms of the semester, you actually be taking really four courses. There's a, a conservation course, there's a, an ecology and kind of biology course, there's a, a cultural South African culture and history course, and then there's a field, directed field research uh, course as well. So everyone takes the same curriculum. There's no real choices, but the choices are, or the options you have are really what you decide to do your research on at the end of the program. Now, prerequisites. You may be thinking, what do I have to do to participate in a program like this? So we want you to have, we don't need you to be a biology major. A lot of our students are, but we get ecology, we get environmental science, um, all types, global health, um, natural resource economics, but we're looking for two semesters of college level biology or related coursework. You got, you got to be at least 18 years of age, uh, 2.7 minimum GPA, good standing with your home institution, and you must be a full-time undergraduate student. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. Now, deadlines. Generally, we, um, if you're looking at the fall, that, that deadline is going to be April 1st. Uh, with COVID, kind of, it's kind of thrown everything in flux and things are somewhat flexible. And so we may push that back depending on um, how the COVID-19 situation changes or, 
or, or, or gets modified in these next few months with the vaccines rolling out. Um, and then if you're looking at the spring, uh, the, those, that application deadline is November 1st. OTS also manages our own endowment just for scholarships. So if you're looking for a way, look, trying to figure out, you know, how do I pay for a program like this? We do have scholarships. What I'd say is apply early. I suggest everyone should apply. It can't hurt to apply. It doesn't take very long. But uh, if you're interested and you're concerned about how the, what the cost of this program would be and how you would pay for it, uh, contact us and we'd be happy to chat with you about some of the funding options. Now, in addition to the semester program in South Africa that I mentioned, African Ecology and Conservation that I've kind of gone over, we're also going to be relaunching our summer course, Fundamentals of Tropical Biology in Costa Rica. Uh, Costa Rica is really where OTS cut our teeth. We've been there for almost 60 years. We have three different field stations from in very different ecosystems and very different environments. Uh, so there may be an opportunity if you're looking for something to do this summer. Costa Rica has opened up its borders to uh, U.S. residents and U.S. citizens. So it is possible to travel, travel there safely along with other uh, policy, uh, excuse me, accommodations that we're making in terms of testing and um, creating pods for the students that will be going as part of this course. But it's a four week field intense course, just like the African Ecology course, where you'll be traveling around the country, looking at the fun, you know, exploring the fundamentals of tropical biology, uh, as well as making some friends along the way. So that's really the end of the, the talk today that I was going to, you know, in terms of explaining the African Ecology program, as well as the tropical biology. You are more than welcome to follow us on social media at Tropical Studies. Uh, and you can also email us in the enrollment management office at undergraduate at tropicalstudies.org. And we'll hope that uh, we'll see you either in, in South Africa or in or in Costa Rica.